Today we want to consider the subject of finding God's will. To begin with, we'll read Ephesians 5, verse 17. Here it says, Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What does that mean? A person who does not understand the will of God is foolish. Wisdom is to understand the will of God. If you want to live as a wise person, you must understand the will of God first. Because God has made a plan for your life. Just like fathers make plans for their children. They go and get admission for them in a kindergarten class. Then they go and get admission for them in a college. Encourage them to write competitive examinations. They guide their children into a career. Guide their children into marriage. In many areas, parents guide their children. They don't bring their children to birth and say, okay, take care of yourself. A lot of animals are like that, not human beings. God is much better than any earthly father. He's got a plan for your life from the time you're born again. You should marry, what job you should have, where you should live, what you should do. Whether you fulfill that plan or not is up to you. Because God doesn't force anybody. The Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit filling people and demons possessing people. There's a lot of difference between demon possession and spirit filling. The difference is this, that when a demon possesses a person, the man loses control of himself. He doesn't know what he's saying, what he's, where he's going. When the Holy Spirit fills a person, but he has more control over himself than before. He can control his tongue, his eyes, because the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. The Holy Spirit does not control him. He gives him the power and allows him to choose. He does not sort of rule him like a demon possess, demons possess a person. God's plan for your life, God doesn't force you to live according to it. Converted when you are young. From that time you realize God has got a plan for your life and you seek his will. When you come to the end of your life, you can look back on a life that is really lived in a worthwhile way. And your life doing your own will. If you read the Bible and go to meetings, at the end of your life you can be very frustrated. You made a lot of money, your children are all born again. The question is at the end of your life, did you do the will of God for your life? So it says here, don't be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 16, make the most of your time. Don't walk as unwise men but as wise men. In order to live like this, verse 18, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and understand God's will. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says here okay. God has earlier itself planned certain works that we should walk in them he's prepared them circumstances the people are all prepared God has marked out a path for you you got to walk in it and the pure blueprint for the whole thing right at the beginning and the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt give them a map of the wilderness and say this is the way to Canaan what only that's the way we would guide people today in order of cloud and fire to lead them day by day well, what is a picture of the Holy Spirit you now stop now go if then you get a map it doesn't tell you when to stop and when to move or what the Holy Spirit it tells you where to stop and when to move on you're too tired to move on the pillar of cloud will stop the map can't show you that God leads us day by day by the Holy Spirit if you obey one day he will lead you to the next day what? step by step he opens up the way before us what a pro a paraphrase of Proverbs 4.12 means you go step by step I will open the way before you that is how God leads us at this point we must say Lord what is your will who should I marry yeah. Which job should I take? Where yeah. should I live? Now it's the gift you have for me. He doesn't speak from heaven. He renews our mind and shows us his will. In chapter 12, from verse 2, it says here, yeah. If you allow your mind to be renewed, find out what is the perfect will of God. Oh, it's not by a voice from heaven that we find out God's perfect will. Ah, it's in the Old Testament. Ah, it's through a prophet who found God's will and told you what it was. So but that old covenant has been abolished. And the method has been changed. And the Hebrews 8, 11 all will know me personally now you can know God's will yourself without going to a prophet and without a voice from heaven other renewal of your mind put up that in an earlier session it is renewed as we read God's word in the New Testament particularly understand God's ways they will God thinks they will know as we begin to think like God thinks we begin to know his will God's way other than they will that means I'm not conformed to this world's way of thinking in the says in this verse they don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In the goodness is not found in our dress. This is found in our mind. From the mind, it affects our dress and so many other things. It's in the mind that worldliness comes. It's in the mind that we are renewed to think like God thinks. So, we've got to get out of our mind all these worldly values. Otherwise, we'll never find the will of God. Enough from childhood, acquiring worldly values is important. The opinion of men is important. People happy. Live a comfortable life. Or save up plenty for the future. These are all worldly sense of values. If you come to Christ, Jesus doesn't say you shouldn't save anything, any money for the future. Your trust must not be in that money, but in God. You must seek to please God now, not man. You put them offended. We are not bothered. We don't go out of the way to offend people. We try to please people to be pleasant to them. That is not our goal. Our opinion becomes 
the only thing that matters. If we are careful not to do anything that will unnecessarily offend men, then he must be good before men also. In the value system in our mind changes. Otherwise, we will know what God's will is. Apart from that, we start with Scripture. Are we are really taught in Scripture? We obey. Whether it is Proverbs chapter three, in Proverbs chapter three and verse five and six, we must trust in the Lord with all our heart. Now, more than our own understanding. Now, see, but in trying to find God's will, don't think that my human reason will guide me. There was upon God and say, Lord, you guide me. I don't need anything. I'm going to make a decision. Jesus, if we lack wisdom, ask God. I'm fine. You have to ask in faith. He says, "Ask for wisdom is to say, 'Lord, what is your will?' They trust Him; otherwise, you'll get nothing from the Lord. I'm saying the Lord. I'll wait. They will not be careful. Don't just lean on your reason. Un see, it is not against reason. It is beyond reason. In mathematics, calculus is not against multiplication. Beyond multiplication, and the person who has only studied multiplication does not understand calculus. I'll wait. But it doesn't mean calculus is wrong. Come to the place where he has understood it. Adam is like a third standard student. I will put a PhD student. This was for this reason. In the put reason, I will put you in the Lord. Then it says in verse six, all your ways acknowledge Him. When what God's will just in one area. Every area. Lord, I want to know Your will. And I will guide you. Upper the native. Allah, Nia, I will know Your will. I want to know Your will in this area, but not in this area. Because this is not like going and picking one thing from a shop. Your value system has to change. You want me to spend my money.